I'm joined in studio by a stakeholder in the health sector in one way or the other, Dr. Kelly Olwoch, not a new face to the show. Welcome to Morning Prime. He's the acting CEO at KMTC. That's the Kenya Medical Training Institute right here in the country. Asante for your time. Good morning. Good morning, Jesse. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. And perhaps let's just start with the general information on what Kenyans really should understand when we talk about universal health care coverage. It's a term that's thrown up time and time again. We've heard of the goals by the government in terms of implementing it. We saw it rolled out. Is it in four counties at the onset? What's the journey so far? What exactly should we understand by UHC? Thank you, Jesse. Um, UHC means universal health coverage, and it actually means that uh, all individuals or all citizens in Kenya should access health services without uh, financial hardship. So basically what it means is uh, we should be able to provide health care to all citizens in a way that they will not suffer financial catastrophe in uh, spending in healthcare. Now, uh, Jesse, let me uh, give a brief introduction about Kenya Medical Training College. Uh, Kenya Medical Training College is a middle-level uh, medical training college in Kenya. It is a state corporation uh, enacted by an act of parliament, CAP 261, mm -hmm. and it is basically the largest uh, middle-level training college for health professionals in Kenya in East Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. Every year, Jesse, we um, graduate up to 12,000 graduates who help, help to uh, assist in uh, moving the health agenda forward. Okay. So in terms of health, uh, universal health coverage, mm -hmm. the human resources for health is very essential. And uh, Kenya Medical Training College provides over 85% of health uh, professionals you find in our public and private uh, sector okay. in health in okay, Kenya. Okay, Dr. Allow, allow me to ask, and what role especially, since you've highlighted the role KMTC plays, well, what role does the college play in terms of facilitating the uh, human infrastructure in marginalized areas and hard-to-reach hard areas? What role does KMTC play? Jesse. KMTC has uh, 71 campuses. Some of these campuses are placed in hard to reach areas like Mandera, Lodwa, mm -hmm. Wajia, Garissa, um, Samweni. Um, and uh, basically, what we are looking at in terms of facilitating health care, especially in these areas, is being able to provide access to health services. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesse, KMTC values partnership, and for this reason, KMTC has uh, collaborated with Beyond Zero and Roche Pharmaceuticals. Let me take this opportunity to thank the First Lady for the initiative in Beyond Zero. All right. Uh, up to now, Jesse, we have trained up to 1,200 enrolled community health nurses. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, specialty is supposed to be able to provide healthcare in these marginalized communities. Okay. And we are looking at um, maternal health and child health. We want to ensure that uh, no mother dies while giving life and no child dies before the age of five. Right. And this uh, um, cadre of health personnel, that is the enrolled community nurses, are very critical towards this agenda. And uh, Jesse, um, Kenya in universal health coverage is really focusing on primary health care. And we train and make sure that our health trainees are able to address issues at this level so that uh, we do not have escalating health costs at higher levels of health care. Well, and so up yeah. to now, uh -huh. uh, we have really trained and made, made sure that these communities are taken care of. He, these health workers work in hard to reach areas okay. and provide essential services that enable these communities to uh, be healthy and be productive. So in one way or the other, you think uh, training institutions are doing enough to perhaps get rid of that barrier because when we talk about lack of healthcare personnel that's definitely a big barrier when it comes to the healthcare system right here in the country. Are we doing enough as training institutions? Jesse, um, providing health personnel is a journey. Mm. It's not an end. 
and uh, every single day we are striving towards providing the best that we can for the health uh, care in Kenya. For example, Jesse, every single year, KMTC graduates an average of 12,000 graduates yeah. who go into healthcare system to be able to improve the health uh, status of this population. We actually tailor our programs to be able to take care of emerging health needs of the country. For okay. example, when COVID-19 struck in 2020, we immediately reviewed our curricula to be able to take care of infection prevention and control and be able to take care of issues of immunization to ensure that uh, the health workers are properly trained to give immunization and help uh, vaccination of the whole population. Up mm -hmm. to now, mm -hmm. I'm happy with the progress we are making, but still there's a lot to be done to enable us to achieve uh, universal health coverage and address the emerging issues in healthcare in Kenya. And when we're speaking about quality training, you know, the health sector, just like other sectors, there's so many technological advancements that sort of inform the training. Is this sort of encompassed in the training in order to ensure the health personnel have enough skills to handle this new technological advancements that are happening within the health sector? Yes, Jesse, okay. we do a lot. Right from the training itself, the training is inbuilt to access technology and make sure the trainees are able to be uh, comfortable with technology. KMTC has invested in e-learning. And in e-learning, it means that most of the trainees will be able to access most of their uh, modules on the e-learning platform. And that prepares them for technological advancement and being able to apply and use technology. Uh, Jesse, the institution really works with stakeholders. That means we do what is called the training needs assessment. We look at feedback from stakeholders, from practitioners, and incorporate the feedback mm -hmm. in our curricula. Okay. And when we have this feedback in our curricula, we train and monitor that the training really addresses the concerns of the stakeholders, particularly in terms of technology and soft skills. Right now, we are looking at our curricula to be able to take care of the issues like uh, technology and the soft skills that are needed, like communication, uh, Jesse. Mm -hmm. Our workers need to be able to communicate to the patients True. and to the general public. And therefore, and also right now, we cannot uh, sit back and watch as technology overtakes us. And therefore, the college is very sensitive when it comes to new changes in the environment that enable our trainees to fit into the work environment that they are going to work. So basically, okay. we also do simulation laboratories where our students are able to go into a virtual simulation lab mm -hmm. where we have what we call high fidelity mannequins. Uh, mannequins, that is those uh, models that mimic human reactions uh, in real time. Okay. And therefore, we incorporate technology in training the way we review our curricula and we also incorporate the views of our stakeholders to ensure that our trainees are well-rounded and are able to fit into the new work environment. Speaking of work environment, Dr. Ari, let's talk about the nature of the business, especially within the health sector where we have robust unions. We've seen time and time again industrial action, better known as strike, you know, and they're trying to agitate for their rights. And a curious question, is there any role this training institutions such as KMTC play in order to help this, help us draw the line, help the health workers draw the line between ethics, you know, and rights? How do you approach such a dicey topic? Uh, Jesse, the Article 43 of the Constitution provides that uh, all Kenyans are supposed to access quality health uh, health care. And uh, this includes maternal uh, health and emergency. So we train our trainees that uh, the first and the most important thing is the sanctity of life. That uh, we should never prioritize any other thing beyond um, 
the sanctity of life. And therefore, as we do our training, we incorporate ethics. In fact, it is a major issue when we go to our training to make sure that our curricula and the people we produce are ethical in terms of practice and put the interest of the patient and the public health beyond personal interest. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact that we have had uh, a lot of uh, health-related uh, uh, industrial actions, okay. we've always made sure that we make our trainees be first aware of the need to take care of the patient before they take care of personal interests. Okay. Yes. Well, that's well noted. And perhaps as we finalize, after the training, is there any facilitation that happens through KMTC in terms of placement of these health workers? Because just recently, you know, Kenyans were abuzz with the uh, nurses who were set to work in the United Kingdom. Perhaps do you help with the recruitment and placement process? Yes, uh, Jesse. Mm -hmm. Number one, is to make sure that the country is responsible in terms of the way it addresses health workforce, that we do not have a brain drain. And what we do is to train for the local market and the international market. Okay. For now, because of the bilateral agreement between UK and Kenya through His Excellency, our president, we are putting a lot of effort to bridge the gaps that are identified. For example, we have a started offering English courses and um, collaborating with international organizations like OET and IELTS to ensure that uh, we prepare our graduates for that kind of market. Number two, we, all, we have started to prepare a curriculum to, to ensure that our, our graduates who are accessing international markets are prepared for those markets and therefore we are preparing what is called a pre-departure training for our graduates so that they are able to learn the language of the country where they are going to work, they are able to learn the culture of that country and how the healthcare is provided in that country. So we provide a, an additional package to enable our graduates to be competent in the international market. And I'm happy so far with the progress we are making. The board has put a lot of effort okay. and the staff and uh, management are looking into the feedback that we are getting from our partners and these countries and putting those uh, feedback into the curriculum to enable our trainees to be competent in the international stage. Indeed, KMTC is geared for the international stage and we are working very hard to ensure that our trainees are the best in the international market. Well noted. Asante sana, Dr. Kelly Oluoch. It seems KMTC is definitely doing a lot in terms of training uh, capacity building in order to uh, prepare some of these graduates for the work environment, not just locally but internationally. And perhaps it's all to do with this year's UHC theme, which is in line with leaving no one else behind, health behind rather, invest in health. And definitely, I'm sure KMTC is playing a key part in ensuring equitable access to health for all because that's very important right here in terms of achieving that UHC goal. Dr. Kelly Loach, Asante Sana for your time, the acting CEO at the Kenya Medical Training College, just talking about some of the nitty gritty issues that seem to stand out when UHC comes into sharp focus. And of course, this time round, we're focusing on the healthcare training aspect of which KMTC plays a key part in. Asante for your time. And Merry Christmas. Dr. Merry Christmas, Jesse, and I wish the country uh, Merry Christmas this festive season okay. and a Happy New Year.